and we're just going to very loosely just draw around this venue manager. We're just going to generate some whole balls. That's good. Back in the studio, it's a Monday morning. Um, I shot two weddings over the weekend, Friday in the Cotswolds, Saturday in London. And here's a lesson for all of you wedding photographers out there before we get into today's episode. Don't forget your sun cream, like this mug. I shot a wedding on Friday, hottest day of the year so far, and I left my sunscreen at home. So I basically felt like my skin was on fire come about seven o'clock. Um, it's not a good place to be. Um, but I survived, we're okay, I made it to the other side, but great weddings, brilliant weekend. But before I shot those weddings last week, I published a new video on my channel around Photoshop beta and how the new generative AI fill tool is gonna to be used, potentially, potentially used in my workflow. I'll link to that up here, so if you, if you wanna go and check it out after this, you can go for it. And that film really just explored 10 frames and how I may or may not use generative fill going forward. And I think what really resonated with people is that I wasn't trying to create art or I wasn't trying to distort the image beyond the realms of what it actually was. I just wanted to see how it would be able to assist me kind of create a cleaner image in the edit. And just after I filmed that episode, I started editing a gallery from a wedding in Italy and this image stood out. And for me, it feels like the prime and perfect example to show you guys just how I see AI and generative fill working within my workflow as a wedding photographer. And there is an ongoing discussion around intellectual property and how using AI affects the rights of that image. For example, if you use AI, can you use it commercially? Do weddings fall under commercial use? Again, it's a bigger topic and it's a a discussion that I'm not going to have right here, right now. That's going to be rolling on over the next weeks, months and years, I, I suspect. But I wanted to address how I can use AI and Photoshop beta in my workflow. Also, if you didn't see it, I did a little destination Q&A whilst I was shooting this wedding in Italy. Again, linking to it up here. Still don't know which side I have to point to in this YouTube thing, but it's up top, basically. Go up top and you'll see a destination Q&A afterwards that you can watch. And if you like the vibe, you can hit subscribe, can't you? Yeah, happy with that? Great stuff, let's crack on. Okay, so before we dive into Photoshop and the new generative fill tool, I just wanted to compare it to Lightroom's ability to be able to handle this problem, just so that we have something to really kind of compare it to. Now, the healing tool of Lightroom has come on enormously over the past few years. But I know from looking at this image where the venue manager has just very considerately walked behind the couple as they're entering the, uh, the evening do here. I know that Lightroom would struggle in this situation and I just wanna demonstrate that. So if we use the healing tool, we're gonna to use the content aware or content generate option. And we're just gonna very loosely scrub over this guy and the chef on the right hand side. And let's see what that can handle. So I think, I think from that, it's safe to say that image isn't a usable image. It's great at removing small little objects, but when you give it something a bit more complex, such as this, it simply can't handle it. We could refresh just to see what we get, but I'm pretty sure that's just gonna keep churning out a similar kind of result that looks messy and unusable and yeah, terrible. It's just not even close. So if we compare this now to Photoshop, um, I've created a, a background layer just so that I can show you before and after. And we're just gonna use the lasso tool and we're just gonna very loosely, like we did in Lightroom, just draw around this venue manager that was very inconsiderate and back to the top. And then we're gonna hit generate fill. We're not gonna give it a prompt or a command. We're just gonna generate. And let's see what it can do. One, two, three. 20, 21, 20, let's say 20, about 20 seconds roughly. And that is quite astonishing. You compare that straight away, and it needs a little bit of work. It's not perfect, but it's very, very good. You compare that to Lightroom. I mean, it's not even close, is it? 
What I would say is that, you know, very cleverly, it's added a bouquet to the side of Lauren's dress, but we don't want that. So let's just scrub over that. Let's merge those layers quickly. And let's just see if we can remove that as well. And there you have it. I'm still not entirely convinced about that there with the hand, but again, I think we can just keep going until we're happy that this is the final image. Again, let's just generate fill. And there you have it. The level of detail and blending on that is utterly faultless. You'd be looking for a long time in that image to try and figure out where generative fill has been used in this context. And we have to remind ourselves that's taken 20 seconds. To try and clone that venue manager out manually would have taken a considerable amount of time. Would it, would it even be as good as this? I'm not, even, I'm not even convinced. And again, compare it to Lightroom. Not even, it's not even a comparison, is it? So that for me is simply astonishing. I'm gonna give it one more image very quickly. And I just wanna see how it can handle this situation where the venue manager has now come across the back of the couple. And I wanna see what it's like at generating and understanding that there is an arm there. Okay, let's just go around here. Generative fill, generate. Let's see if it knows to keep the arm in the shot. This one's a bit more, this one's more complex. it will be interesting to see what it can do here. Hold balls, that's good. Wow. How has it done that? Like, ha how? What the... That is unbelievable. Again, you can tell very, very... You can tell a little bit of... There's a bit of detail missing maybe there. There's obviously a bit of noise in the image and, it, and it's not able to kind of transfer that noise or that grain across. But on the whole, that is quite simply breathtaking. Also, what we could do if we wanted to is just tidy up this little bit on the floor here. Just remove this. I mean, compared to what it's just produced for me, this should be quite simply effortless. But let's just tidy it up anyway. And again, it's taking between 10 and 20 seconds to be able to produce these results, which is quite staggering, really. And there you have it. The venue manager has been removed. If we just merge that. I mean, it's, it's quite mind-blowing, really. And again, if we just look at the first one, let's just merge those. I mean, I've used the word faultless a few times, I think, in this video, but that is quite simply, I'm a bit lost for words. I'm, genu I'm genuinely blown away at how impressive that is. And really, that kind of brings me to how I'm gonna be using AI and generative fill in my workflow. But what I won't be doing is using AI to bend or create or produce an image that is not reflective of the scene that was in front of me. That won't be happening. Let's park the intellectual property and commercial usage discussion to one side for, for now. This is remarkable. Its ability to be able to tidy up a frame in a way that we've never had access to before, unless you outsource to a professional retoucher, is quite simply breathtaking. But that is how it will be used for me. It will be used to tidy up images. It won't be used to alter the context or the fabric of that image. I certainly won't be using it to bend or create a broader image that didn't exist. That won't be, that won't be for me. That is where I will draw the line. The context of the image still has to exist. It has to be real. Weddings are real events. In terms of being able to just remove a venue manager from the back of a shot in a way that has never been accessible before, I will absolutely be doing that. Sign me up. I'm in. So that's it. It is the next level of advanced cleaning for our industry. And it's, and it's just super efficient. It achieves results that I would never have kind of imagined six months ago in rapid time far quicker than I could have imagined, far superior than I could have imagined. So that's it. I don't see AI going anywhere anytime soon. And actually, given that this is still in its infancy, it's only going to become quicker and better at achieving the results that we want it to achieve. I suppose the discussion for you as a photographer and a wedding photographer 
is where do you draw that line? Where do you use it and when don't you use it? I've already set those boundaries for me and my work. I know where and when I'm gonna be using it, but let me know in the comments below what you think. Have you given it a go yet? And how do you feel about this and how it's gonna affect our industry? And that is it, we're wrapping up. So thank you for watching, thanks for tuning in. If you like the vibe, hit subscribe and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.